Okay, welcome to another lesson on <clears throat> how do we pass common core geometry, right? So this one is uh, basically uh, lesson still number one, but this is part B, <clears throat> or you call it lesson number two, it doesn't matter. Now, here we're still talking about the equilateral triangle. In the last lesson, we learned how to construct an equilateral triangle. So right now, we should be familiar with this. All right, so let us read what it says over here. All right, it says, you will need a compass and a straight edge. It says, using the skills that you, you learn, okay, they want us to construct three equilateral triangles, okay, where the first and the second triangles share, okay, share a common side, and the second and third triangles share a common side. Clearly and precisely list the steps needed, okay, to accomplish this construction. Then it says, switch your list of steps with a partner and complete the construction according to your partner's steps. Revise your drawing and list of steps as needed. All right, so let's start doing this. So I'm supposed to do three equilateral triangles where the first and the second share a common side, okay? But they share a common side. How am I gonna do this? I have no idea. All right, you know what? First, we need a segment. So let's draw a segment with a straight, red, straight edge, okay? Uh, I'm gonna draw it in the middle of the paper because I really don't know like how much or how big they're gonna be. So let's see, let me draw segment, segment AB. I'm gonna make it one inch long. That's it, I'm not measuring it. It could be one centimeter long. It depends on how you wanna do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a segment AB. Okay, so this is the second time I'm actually doing this. So hopefully it comes out to be right. <clears throat> well, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna construct an equilateral triangle. Hopefully you can see this, okay. So I'm gonna open the compass and I'm gonna create, remember Euclid's uh, proposition number one, segment AB, and then I'm gonna create a circle A, okay? I'm gonna draw circle A with AB as the radius. So this is the radius, wherever I go, it will have the same distance. Remember, you already practiced how to construct circles. So I did that, right? Now I'm gonna go to circle B and I'm gonna create circle B with radius BA. Good. See, I learned how to grab the compass differently or you could just move the paper around. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so I just finished and now I am going to join, okay? You could label it if you want to, but right now you're not required to. So I am going to join the intersection of the two circles, okay? Because that's how you construct an equilateral triangle. Boom, okay. So my first triangle is done. Now I'm supposed to, remember, it says three equilateral triangles where the first and the second triangles shared a common side. Wait, hold on a second. How am I gonna do the other triangle? I have to make them share where the first and the second. Okay, so I'm gonna use segment AB. Segment AB, I'm gonna call this C now. Now I'm forced to label it. So I am going to create another equilateral triangle using this segment AC, okay? So look. I'm gonna move my paper so it's easier for me to work, okay? And I'm gonna continue the process. I hope that's the way it is. So I'm gonna open the compass to a radius. Okay, I'm gonna create, um, wait, hold on a second. I already have circle A with radius AC because it's the same thing as radius AB. Oh, okay. So then let me go to C and I'm gonna create circle C with radius CA. I hope this one is good. Hopefully you're following. Okay, I did that. And now, I think I'm gonna join this point right here. Remember, the radius is the same length. So this is supposed to be a radius. Look, this is a radius of circle C. This is a radius of circle C. And I'm gonna join this other right here. Okay, 
basically this is nothing more than another radius from circle A. Okay, A. So the first and the second triangle share a common side, AC. Uh, what do you want to call this? Let's call this, um, I don't know. I really don't know what you want to call it. Choose any letter, I really don't care. Okay? Can you lower that TV? It's, it's not letting me teach anything or talk. All right then. Now, where the first and the second triangle share a common side, and the second and the third triangle share a common side. So to me, this is gonna be triangle number one, this is gonna be triangle number two. So triangle number two, so I could make another triangle right here or I could just continue right here. I think I'll continue right here. So let's call this um, A, B, C, let's call this D. Points are labeled with capital letters, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna create circle A. Oops, I already created circle A, remember? Everything is gonna be a radius of uh, circle A. So I did, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a circle D. I don't know if it makes sense to you, but yeah. Circle D with radius DA. Okay. And now, look at this. This is the intersection of circle A and circle D. So now, all I'm gonna do is now join the steps. Yep, that's good, right? <sighs> wow, so I just did. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm gonna call this point E. Okay, so now, the thing is that now you have to list the steps, okay? The list of steps. So what was the first thing I did? Well, I constructed segment AB. So that's exactly what you're gonna write. Okay, actually, I should start right here. Hopefully, you could see. If not, I'm gonna make it smaller a little bit. Okay, so number one, uh, construct segment AB. So, draw, and this time we're gonna use uh, vocabulary. So, draw segment AB. You see, segment AB. Okay. Then after we drew the segment AB, what did we do? Oh, right, we created, okay. Step number two, I'm just gonna go over here, okay. Step number two, we draw, draw circle A, okay, comma with radius, A, B, correct? Yes, circle A, radius A, B. Then we went to B, M, the radius was B, A, right? So the third step was draw circle, circle B with radius radius B A. Yes. Okay. Then what in the world did we do? Oh, I see. Number four. Label the intersection. Okay, the intersection, the intersection of this circle and this circle, label it C, right? So label intersection C. Label the intersection C. Okay? Um, you know what? Let me see now. Let me see something. That sounds like Superman song. 
Um, okay. Now we drew circle C, right? So step number five, draw. Circle C, right? And the radius of C, what was it? Oh, C A, okay. So let draw circle C with radius. C A. That was right here. That was that was right here. C A and then phew, circle, right? Remember that they all have to have the same measure, okay? And we labeled it, okay, so um, number six, step number six, label, okay, label intersection. What did we label that intersection? We label that intersection D. Yeah. So label intersection D right here. Okay. Number seven. Uh, what was number seven? I don't remember. Did we draw another circle? Of course. <clears throat> draw circle D. Circle D with radius. Let me see. Circle D had a radius of DA. Right? And label intersection. Let's see. D, A. Okay, label intersection E. So number eight will be label intersection. Intersection E. Right? So we got that. Okay. And what else? What else? What else? What else? No, I think that was it, right? Okay. Now, well, we drew all the segments that are congruent to AB. Oh my God, yeah, I forgot. Okay, so let me see. Draw circle AB. Draw circle A, radius AB. Label intersection C. You know what? Label the intersection C, and I should have said connect, connect CA and CB to create equilateral triangle ABC or A or ACB. Yeah, but you know what? But I think this setup instruction should help someone create, you know, the requested or whatever was required of the problem. Okay. All right then, so let's see now. By the way, look at this construction. What would happen? I'm not asking you to do it, but what would happen if I was to continue drawing triangles that connect, that have one side in common? Let's say I wanted to go beyond. I'm just gonna go beyond, okay? You don't have to, but just watch. What would happen if I draw circle E? With set, of course, with the radius EA. Just to create another equilateral triangle. So I would connect this point right here. Mm. Wait. I want to I want to I want to do it one more time. What happens if I do it one more time? Well, let's see. Another, oh, intersection, uh, I don't know, F? Sure, F, circle F, see what happens. Whoa, this is OD nice. <laughs> I'm nice, okay. <clears throat> so I just create another circle and I'm gonna connect the point where the two circles intersect, which is basically 
where the measure is. Did I do it right? Nope, I didn't do it right. That's not the circle that I was supposed to, to draw. Okay, no problem. So what was it then? I draw circle F right here. Oh my God. Of course, and, where's, and circle A is right here. Circle F and circle A. This is the point where I was supposed to connect them. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, I'm nice. Anyways, this is beautiful. This is, I didn't even know I could do this, but I did it. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on and to the next activity. Let's see what it says. It says, okay, you could pause it, enlarge it, whatever. I'm just gonna make sure that my students can actually read this. I'm gonna go over it. Okay, let's see now, can I do this? Oh, okay. So it says, on a separate piece of paper, Use the skills you have developed in this lesson to construct a regular hexagon. Mm -hmm. First of all, what's a hexagon? Oh, a polygon with six sides, right? Sure. It says clearly and precisely list the steps needed to accomplish this construction. Compare your results with a partner and revise your drawing and list of steps as needed. Sure. So basically, I think you know what to do. You need to construct a regular hexagon. It might help to look back at this, at the previous problem. It might also help if you look at the set of instructions that I just gave you, that you just wrote. Look, I'm only missing this segment. Let's see if you can do it. Okay, get to work. Now watch this. I already know that this is the measure of the radius, right? This is the radius, okay? 
So I'm not gonna draw another circle like this. Oh wow, no. Well, I know, I already know what's gonna happen. See that? That's all I need. Now for the purposes, definitely drawing the whole circle is good. But this is all I need. Okay? So watch this. This is the intersection of circle A with circle, um, with, with um, what is this? Um, a, B, C, D, with D. See that? <clears throat> what else? Then I'm gonna call this intersection E, right? And then we're gonna construct circle E. So I don't need to construct circle E because all I'm interested in is this intersection right here. It takes time and patience. Okay, you have to have patience. Then here, I'm, I was gonna construct another circle, right? Like the beautiful uh, drawing that I did before. So anyway, all I need is this point right here. That's it. And then, this. And that's your hexagon. Beautiful hexagon. And yeah, you might wanna call it F, G, whatever you wanna call it, you gotta label it fine. The center was A. Wait, hold on a second. Oh my lord. I just learned something. I don't, well, it depends. This hexagon fits perfectly into circle A. Are you saying that I could just, and all, remember, the length, each of this length is equal to the radius of the circle are you saying that I could just go like this okay let's see are you saying that I just need to draw the radius okay I'm sorry the segment that goes from the center of that circle just like this and from there and from there just make one Two, three, four, five, and six marks? I don't know, but let's try it. So this is the radius. And with that, I'm gonna place my, my compass on the point of so the radius touches the circle. And I'm gonna go one, Two, three, four, five, and six. And you're saying that all I gotta do is connect this part right here that's cool <clears throat> of course this one looks a lot better than this one but hey it's still the same thing okay then but now, what would be the instructions? Well, I guess it would be the same instructions as the ones before with a little more information. Do not draw segment AB, then draw circle A with AB as its radius, then draw circle B with BA as a radius. Uh, label the intersection C, then draw circle C with CA as the radius. And then, let me see, circle C, right? And now, label the intersection D 
label the intersection D, connect the segments, then, <coughs> then, uh, what else? I don't remember. Circle C, right? And you did that. Then construct. Oh, I'm brutal. Like I didn't do the whole thing. Okay, I'm so sorry. You know what? For the set of instructions, yeah. Well, what I had in mind was draw circle D. Okay. Oops, it's not focusing. I don't like that. Uh oh. Okay. So let's do this. So then, and then you draw circle E with E A as the radius, and then you draw circle F. Right? Just like when you were doing the first drawing. It's just that I don't I don't know. I didn't go overboard. So therefore. I do really need to do the circles in order for me to write the steps, right? Okay, let's go on to the next problem. This, you know how to write the steps. It's the same steps that you had in here, but a little more. And I'm gonna give you time for you to do it, right? Okay, so, is this an equilateral triangle, yes or no? and we gotta justify our response. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I am going to see why it is not an equilateral triangle. Well, how do I, how do I know if something is an equilateral triangle? Well, I'm gonna carry out the construction of the equilateral triangle. So what am I gonna do? I am going to create I'm going to draw where we have segment AC, right? So I am going to open my compass to the length of AC. So that should be my radius, correct? Okay, and I'm going to draw circle A. Okay, I know it's going to go out of the paper, but still you got the most important part. So you draw circle A with AC as the radius. Now you're gonna draw circle C with the same, the same thing as the radius, with CA as the radius. And yes, it will go over the paper, but you already know what you're interested in, okay? And right away, I have proven that it is not an equilateral triangle. You know why? <coughs> exactly. If AC, is the length of one of the sides of the triangle, right? And it's also the radius of my circle A, correct? And CA is the radius of my circle C. And I should label the intersection of the points B, that should be B. B should be the intersection. And it is not an equilateral triangle because AC is the radius of A. Therefore, AB should also be a radius of the same circle. And it is not. Okay? So let us quiet down a little bit and let me tell you why it is not. So the triangle is not equilateral, right? The third vertex will not be one of the two intersections of the circle. The third vertex will not be one of the two intersections. Okay? Okay, so let us construct the perpendicular bisector of a line segment. So the first thing is that when you're given a segment, you just label it, okay? It's a segment, so it has end points. Let's label this A, this B. To construct the perpendicular bisector, just follow the same steps that you followed when you were constructing the equilateral triangle. So let's see. Open the compass to the length of the segment AB. Okay, trace your circle with radius AB, okay? And now, create circle B with radius BA, okay? And that's it. 
Okay then. So now, we're not just going to construct an equilateral triangle. We already know how to do that. But the funny thing is that here, when you connect this point with this other point right here, the point of intersection where the circles intersect, okay? That, my friends, is your perpendicular bisector. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that this line segment is perpendicular to segment AB. Let's call this segment CD, okay? That means that this segment is perpendicular to segment AB. All right, if that is true, by definition, the perpendicular bisector goes through the midpoint. That means that it actually, it actually uh, divides segment AB into two congruent parts. Let's call this middle segment segment M, M. Okay, why? Well, the uh, midpoint, I guess. Okay then, now, but how can I prove that this is really true, that it chops it in half? Well, think of it this way. By definition, it says that it goes through the mid. Let's connect CA and CB. I can also connect BD and AD, and I will have the same thing here. But for the purposes being, so let's see now. Segment AB is the radius of circle A. Segment AC is also a radius of circle A. Okay, so that makes this side congruent to this side. Also, segment BA is a radius of, cir of circle B. And segment BC is also a radius of circle B. You understand what I'm saying? So they have the same length. Oops, I did not connect it properly. Hopefully I did now. Yeah, I did now. Okay, <clears throat> so if AB is congruent to AC, okay, and AC is congruent, and AB is congruent to BC, I can say that AC is congruent to BC, making these two sides congruent. And you put a hash mark to represent that they are congruent. Okay then, what else do I know? Well, that if this is the perpendicular bisector, then it intersects, okay, CD intersects AB at M. So making AM and BM congruent to each other. Hopefully you see that. Well, then there is, um, let me see, there's a theorem, okay, that says that you can prove that two triangles are congruent by having, you know, uh, one side and two angles, or two angles and one side, or all three sides congruent. Well, in this case, look at what I have here. And I have an angle of one triangle, I'm sorry, a side of one triangle, congruent to a side of the other triangle. I have two, tr two triangles right here, look. I have triangle ACM, and I have triangle BCM. Oh, hopefully, hopefully you see that. Well, by the reflexive property, CM is congruent to itself. CM is a side of this triangle right here, okay? CM is a side of this triangle right here. It is also the same side as this triangle right here. And the reflexive property says that a quantity is equal to itself. So CM is congruent to itself. So then, what do I have here? I have side, angle, side, okay? Or you could say that you have side, 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 okay? So you could prove triangles congruent. You know what? Write this down, all right? You could prove triangles congruent by, on the little back, uh, let me see now. No, don't worry about it. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll do this later. All right. So now, explain how to construct the perpendicular bisector. Well, by definition, 
anywhere I go on this line, okay, will be equidistant to points A and B. It, is, it has been proven, okay? So for example, this is an equilateral triangle. So the distance from CB is the same distance from CA. But what if I have my distance right here? It won't matter, okay? It won't matter. Look, I could have the same distance right here. See that? The, the same, see, and I could call this F. And AF is congruent to BF, okay? Because it doesn't matter <clears throat> if you make the circle smaller, shh, both circles will intersect right here. Now, for the purposes being, I definitely, they ask you for perpendicular bisector, just follow the same construction of the equilateral triangle and you'll be, you'll be fine, okay? All right then, so now uh, the steps, how to construct the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so first, okay, you have a segment AB, okay, which is given. Then you draw circle A, okay, draw circle A with radius. With radius what? Radius AB. Okay. Then draw circle B with radius. Circle B with radius BA. Okay. Four. Connect. Connect, that's a weird uh, C, but anyway, connect the points of, no, the points where the two circles intersect. The points where, where the two circles intersect okay okay then so now you know about the perpendicular bisector now is your turn to do the drawing so let's do it let me see now where is this thing Okay, let me make it smaller, it's smaller, it's smaller, it's smaller. Okay. So let's see now. Your turn. Okay. So what are we gonna do? We label point A, point B. Okay. And construct an equilateral triangle basically. Okay, do it then. All right, so I'm assuming that you did the equilateral triangle and that you already finished it. <clears throat> now, for the purposes being, I am going to demonstrate that you can also do the, the construction of the perpendicular bisector by just putting the compass on point A and see, I'm not gonna go all the way to B. I just need to be more than halfway. Why? Because if you notice, the circles will intersect halfway. See that? So I need to go more than halfway. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Look. 
here and I pretend to draw a circle, right? So this is the radius of my circle, whatever this is. Now, guess what? With the same length, do not change the compass. With the same length, I'm gonna do the same thing to AB, okay? Now, this is called the radius of my circles. So, this circle, okay, this radius right here is the same thing as this radius right here. That's why the circles will intersect. Anyways, so what I'm going to do right now is I am going to connect the points. And this, my friends, is also your perpendicular bisector. 90 degree angle right here, 90 degree angle right here. Now, it works because when you were doing the construction of the equilateral triangle, you opened it to the measure of the, of the segment. And you did this with your, you constructed a circle. And without changing the length of the compass, you went to point B and you did the same thing. Look, see that? They will intersect. And that proves that any point on this line will be equidistant to the endpoints of your segment. Okay, any point here, 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 here. And therefore, if this point right here is equidistant from A and B, that makes this point, this point, sorry, the midpoint. Okay, so that's it. Okie dokie. So now let us move on to another construction. Now, did I say something about doing anything else? No, that's good, that was good, okay. So now it says, constructing the perpendicular to a line segment from a point not on the line. Okay, no problem. So once again, remember, everything has to do with the equilateral triangle. So what you're going to do is take your compass and put it on the point of intersection. Open the compass so that it will intersect the segment that you are given in two places. In other words, it's like, it's like saying construct a circle, basically. Now guess what? You construct a circle and you're going to label the point of intersection, okay? Call it A, B. And now that you have A and B, then construct an equilateral triangle. What do I mean? Well, just follow the steps. In other words, construct the perpendicular bisector. Open the compass, right? Radius AB, and go like this. Draw a circle, of course. Now you understand that you don't have to draw a full circle. Just need to make sure that it's, you know, the arc with the radius. And now I'm gonna draw another circle, okay? Of course, we're not drawing the full circle. I'm just interested in the points of intersection. I'm just interested in this point right here and this point right here. And now connect the points. Oh, beautiful. So what just happened? Well, since I did the perpendicular bisector of this new segment, this is the midpoint of this segment and it's perpendicular. But it's just the midpoint of this segment, not the line. And the construction says, constructing the perpendicular to a line from a point not on the line. So this is the perpendicular to a line from a point not on the line. Hmm. And what do I need that for? Well, you will need to remember this because when this is actually, if you don't believe me, let's connect the points. Let's connect these points right here. My friends, I present to you, oh, and let's call this C. I present to you the altitude of triangle ACB. That is why you need to know how to construct the perpendicular from a point not on the line. 
Okay? For example, here, construct the perpendicular to a line segment from point B. This is point B right here. So what am I gonna do? The same process. Point B is a point not on AC, meaning I gotta do the altitude. Okay then, so let me do that. I said, construct a new segment. So you are going to create a circle that intersects AC in two areas. Funny thing is that it doesn't do it. So what the hell am I gonna do? Well, in geometry, you could just, you know, do pretty much whatever you want. So what I'm gonna do is, if it didn't touch it, I'm gonna extend AC. See that? Now it touches it in two areas. Label my new segment. I'm gonna call it uh, EF. Label my new segment. And now that you have your new segment, just do the perpendicular bisector, like constructing a, um, a right triangle. Look, open the compass to EF. And this time I'm just gonna go here. Okay, nah, I'm gonna do the whole thing. I'm gonna look here. And then without changing the length of the compass, I'm gonna go to F. And that's it. Of course, this time they want the altitude. So I'm gonna be more like clean. So I'm not gonna go from here, I'm gonna go from here. And that, my friends, is the altitude. I should have not gone all the way here, but I'm showing you that it goes all the way to the intersection. So this is an altitude. It's the same thing that you did here. Remember, to create your online segment, all you have to do is trace a circle. And that's it. So now, EF. Okay, what is the definition of an altitude? Okay, what is the definition of altitude of a triangle? Okay, it's a, it's a segment. Uh, let me see, yeah. Altitude is a segment that Okay, that goes, goes or extends, okay, goes from a vertex, from a vertex, okay, from a vertex, oh my God, come on, come on, come on, come on, don't focus. Okay, got it. Sorry, okay, from a vertex to, uh, to the side, to the side, okay, opposite, to the side opposite, and, or to the opposite side, and is, Perpendicular, and this is the new symbol for perpendicular, so next time you don't have to write it, okay? All right, so basically that, that is the altitude. It has to be perpendicular, and it goes from the uh, vertex to its opposite side. All right, cool then. Okay, dokie, so now let's turn to page 15, and let's see what it says. Huh? It says, construct a line perpendicular to AB through P. Hmm, okay. So construct a line perpendicular to AB through P, and another line perpendicular to CD also through P. So I'm supposed to construct a perpendicular line to AB that passes through P. And again, perpendicular line to CD passing through P. All right, first things first. Let's construct the perpendicular to AB. We already seen how to do it. It's like drawing the altitude, okay? So what do I need? I need to create a circle, right? To create a circle that intersects AB in two places. All right, let's see. Mm, no, I need more. 
Can I see? Yeah. So this circle will intersect AB in two places. Now to construct the perpendicular to a line, I don't really need to draw the full circle like, like what I'm gonna do right now. You know why? Because I'm only interested in the two places where the circle intersects AB. So it intersects it right here and it intersects it right here. Okay? So now, what am I gonna do? Easy. Construct the perpendicular bisector, which is basically the same thing as I told you before, the same thing as creating an equilateral triangle. So you open to the length of the segment, the new segment, you see that? The idea behind creating a new circle with center P is to create a new line segment. That's basically the whole thing. Because once you create the, your own line segment, then you'll be able to create the perpendicular bisector. Remember, this is the center. This is equidistant. This is the center of your circle. And it's also going to go through the midpoint. So let's create our, our uh, what do you call it, perpendicular bisector. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a twist here. Usually for the perpendicular bisector, I would do, you know, a circle here, right, with radius of the segment, and then I will trace the compass over here, and I will create another, another uh, circle. Basically, constructing an equilateral triangle. Well, in this case, I already know that the line is going to go through P. So basically, all I need is the bottom part. Hopefully you understand this. If not, don't worry, I will redo it doing all the steps. That's all I'm interested in. I know that if I continue the circle, as I did in the previous problem, the intersection is gonna be aligned to P. So there goes your perpendicular through P. Okay? Now, let me redo it as if I was doing all the steps. So basically, I created a circle with center P. That gave place for me to create my own segment, which is this. I could call it whatever, FE or whatever. Then I go on here and I pretend like I'm constructing the equilateral triangle. See that? With radius of my, with length, radius of my new segment. Then I go here and I create my other circle. See that? Just like if I'm creating an equilateral triangle. And of course, the, as I told you before, they will intersect, the intersection will be aligned to the point P. I just didn't want to really do it because it, as you become acquainted with this, it is not necessary to do all three circles. Can I help? Okay? No, you cannot help. What? Because you're not gonna be on the video. You, oh gosh, he's on the video. Okay, you are on the video. Okay, goodbye, bye, bye, bye. All right, anyways. So I created the perpendicular to AB that passes through point P, okay? Now, I am going to create the perpendicular to CD and basically I am going to turn the paper around. And this time I am not gonna draw another three circles because it's gonna be chaos. I'm just gonna direct everybody through the process. So you know that the first thing is to create a circle with center P that intersects CD. Well, I have to open the compass a lot more than that. So it intersects C, well, actually I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna do it. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Remember something, you can always extend the lines. So let me see. Yeah, I'd rather extend the line because it's gonna drive me crazy. All right, so it's gonna be like this. Okay, remember, I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, 
Remember, you are to draw a full circle, but in reality, you're only interested in two things. You're interested in the point of intersection, which is one right here, okay? One is right here, and the other one, well, the other one, it does not touch the line, so I'm gonna have to extend CD. See, I extended it, and now I know where the other point of intersection is. Remember, this was a full circle with center P. That's all you need to know. Just because you see me doing less marks doesn't mean that I'm not following the process. All right then, so now that I got my new segment, I'm gonna create the perpendicular bisector. How? Just by following the steps to create a, an, an equilateral triangle. So let me see, let me label this. Okay, so this is one right here. This one right here. Hopefully you can see that now better. So this is the length. So I open the compass to the length, to the length of the new segment. You see that? Okay. And now, what am I gonna do? Let me zoom out so you could see. Same process as constructing the equilateral triangle. So you construct a circle over here, right? Of radius, of radius length of the segment that we have here. Okay, the length of the segment right here, that's the radius. Then, without changing the length of your compass, because we are building an equilateral triangle, we go and boom, wow, well, let's do the whole thing. But I'm only interested in here. Okay, and of course, in here. So the two intersect right here. Okay, then this is right here. Cool then. So now, let me go back to see what else do they want. Okay, so I did construct the perpendicular to AB through P and the perpendicular to CT through P. Now they want to know what is the name of the resulting four-sided shape. Measure its length with a ruler and calculate the area. Okay, so the resulting shape is, let me see, so this is P, sorry, my bad. Okay, I know what the resulting shape is. And now it says, measure its side length with a ruler and calculate its area. Well, I am not going to do this for you. But I will tell you one thing. Your area, the area of each of you, okay, the area that each of you get might be slightly, 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 pointing in you, slightly different by a couple of millimeters or one millimeter or two millimeters, okay? It's not gonna be perfect because we're not a computer. So measure the length. By the way, how do you find the area of uh, a quadrilateral? Okay, like a rectangle. Area is equal to length times the width. Or area equals to length times the width. See that? So measure the length, measure the width, and please, uh, you have two minutes to find the area. Okay? Good. Oh, by the way, uh, you could use centimeters or inches. It really doesn't matter.
Okay. Let us move on to the next problem. Okay. It says, construct a line perpendicular to the ones below, to the one below, okay? That passes through point P. Okay. So I need, the first thing I need to do is the same thing I've been doing, okay? Right now the point P is on the line. But still, you gotta create your own segment. And the way to create your own segment is open the compass to any length, remember, and you're gonna create circle P. Now, circle P, anyway, the idea is to intersect the segment in two places. Did you notice that I didn't do the whole circle? But indeed, the circle is right there. Look, the circle is right there. It's easier for me to just instruct you to always draw your circle, because it's the one step that you know. But in the future, remember that you're only interested in the points of intersection. The idea is to create your own line segment. Once you, cre once you create your own line segment, you're good to go. Oh, I got you. Okay, so now, what am I gonna do? I'm going to create the perpendicular bisector of my new segment. And this time around, I am not gonna follow the rules of creating the equilateral triangle. The idea is the same, okay? You're creating the two circles and then you're going over here and you create another circle right here, but it is not necessary. We already know that as long as we open the compass more than halfway the length of the segment we're gonna be okay look i'm gonna prove it to you so i go around here right see from my point of intersection of my new segment to more than halfway and of course you gotta keep the same radius if you don't keep the same radius it's not gonna work so now i'm gonna go to my other point of intersection right that my new circle intersected, and I am going to do this. So now, when you connect your new point, of course it's gonna go through P. All right? Let's go on to, uh, let's, let's do the next one. Okay, so the line is a vertical line, big deal. It really doesn't matter. So once again, what are you gonna do? You are going to create your own line segment. Okay? And you know which you know which point is going to be the center of that circle? Or the center of that new segment? Of course. Point P. So let me just create okay, this time I'm gonna actually draw the circle. See, I become a G using the compass. If you want to use one of these compasses, let me know and I'll see what I can do. All right, so my new circle, now I got my new segment. So now what I gotta do is create either an equilateral triangle if I have space or, well, not create an equilateral triangle, create the perpendicular bisector using the process of, of creating an equilateral triangle. Since I have enough space here, I am going to do it. So how do you create an equilateral triangle? Okay, you label, if you want to, the new, the new point, the new segment, A, B, right? You open the compass from A to B, and you draw a circle, which in this case, I don't really need to go and draw the whole circle, because I already know. With the compass here, draw a semicircle if, I, if you need to. Then with the same radius without changing, put the thing in point B and draw another, another circle. But in reality, you already know what you're interested in. You're interested in the points where your new circle is going to intersect. So I'm not gonna create the old circle. 
but I hope you understand that much. If not, you're gonna have to watch this over and over and over again. So, of course, the intersection of the, of, of the two circles is gonna go through point P. Sorry about this. Damn, I'm becoming lousy. Okay? And there you go, that's how you construct a perpendicular through a point on the line. And now you got quiz 1B. So you got a list, uh, Euclid's five common notions or actions, which is provided in your handout. There's a part two, okay, which we discussed already. What is the definition? Remember? You only have to have an understanding of what is being discussed, the term that is being used. Whether it exists or not, that's something that has to be proven separately. What is an action? It doesn't need to be proved. It's blatantly obvious. A theorem has to be proven. Okay? A theorem, like for example, the uh, why does a triangle have 180 degrees? Well, you have to prove why it has 180 degrees. All right? So, that's it. See you on the next lesson.